Listen now to the voice of the world's leading vaccine expert, Dr. Maurice Hilleman, chief of the Merck Pharmaceutical Company's vaccine division, relay this problem he was having with imported monkeys. He best explains the origin of AIDS, but what you are about to hear was cut from any public disclosures. And I think that vaccines have to be considered the, the bargain basement technology for the 20th century. Fifty years ago, when Morris Hilleman was a high school student in Miles City, Montana, he hoped he might qualify as a management trainee for the local J.C. Penney store. Instead, he went on to pioneer more breakthroughs in vaccine research and development than anyone in the history of American medicine. Among the discoveries he made at Merck are vaccines for mumps, rubella, and measles. Tell me uh, how you found SV40 in the polio vaccine. Well, that was a Merck thing. Okay. Yeah, I came to Merck, and uh, I was going to develop vaccines. Mm -hmm. And we had wild viruses in those days. You remember the wild monkey kidney viruses and so forth? And I finally, after six months, gave up. I said that you cannot develop vaccines with these damn monkeys. We're, we're finished. And if I can't do something about it, I'm going to quit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. So I went down to see Bill Mann at the zoo in Washington, D.C. And, and I told Bill Mann, I said, look, here's a, I got a problem. I don't know what the hell to do. Bill Mann is a real bright guy. And I said, these lousy monkeys are picking it up you know, while being stored in the airports in transit at these loading, offloading. Mm -hmm. He said, very simple. He said, you go ahead. Get your monkeys out of West Africa, get the African green, bring them into Madrid, unload them there, there are no other traffic through there for animals, fly them into Philadelphia, pick them up, or fly them into New York and pick them up, right off the airplane. So I brought African greens, and I didn't know we were importing AIDS virus at the time. <laughs> And oh, it was you who introduced stage virus to the country. It was you who introduced stage virus to the country. It was you who introduced stage virus to the country. It became a story. It became a story. It became a story. Mert will do to Velvet Vax. Mert will do to Velvet Vax. Mert will do to Velvet Vax. So what he did, he, he brought in, I mean, we brought in those monkeys. Now we had those. And this was the solution. Because those monkeys didn't have the wild viruses. But we had all Wait, of these why didn't the greens have the wild viruses since they came from because Africa? Because they weren't, uh, well, they weren't, they weren't being infected in these group holding things with all the other 40 different viruses. But they had the ones they brought from the jungle, though. Yeah, they had those, but there were relatively few. What, what you do is you have a gang housing, you're going to have an epidemic transmission of infection in a confined space. Oh, is that the problem? So, anyway, the greens came in. Now we had these, and then... We're, we're taking our seed stocks to clean them up, and God, now I'm discovering new viruses. So I said, shoot, does priest. Well, I got an invitation from the Sister Kinney Foundation, you know, which was the opposing foundation, and that was the live virus. Oh, right. Yeah, they had jumped on Sabin's bandwagon. Mm -hmm. They had asked me to come down and give a talk at, at the Sister Kinney Foundation meeting. And I said, it was an international meeting, I said, God, what am I going to talk about? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about the detection of non-detectable viruses as a topic. There were those who didn't want a live virus vaccine. They concentrated. The National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis concentrated all its efforts on getting more and more people to use the killed virus vaccine. While they were supporting me, for research on the live virus vaccine. So now I gotta have something, you know, that's gonna attract attention. <laughs> so I thought, gee, that damn SV40, I mean, that, that damn that vacuolating agent that we have, I'm gonna just pick that particular one. Mm -hmm. That virus has got to be in, in vaccines, and uh, it's gotta be in Sabin's vaccine, so I quickly tested it. <laughs> sure enough, it was in there. And I'll be damned. So now, uh, so I go ahead and uh, 
So you just took stocks of Sabin's vaccine off the shelf here at Merck? Yeah, well, that had not been made at Merck. It was made at Merck. You were making point. it for Sabin at this point? Yeah, it was made before I came. Yeah, but at this point, Sabin is still just doing these massive field trials. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Russia and so forth. So I go mm -hmm. down, I talked about the... Um, Detection non first. I told Albert. Uh, but at this point, Sabin is still just doing these massive field trials. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Russia and so forth. So I go mm -hmm. down, I talked about the, um, the detection non first. And I told Albert, I said, listen, Albert, I said, you know, you and I are good friends. But I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there and you're going to get upset. But I'm going to talk about a virus that's in your vaccine. Now, you're going to get rid of the virus. Don't worry about it. You're going to get rid mm -hmm. of it. But, um, of course, Albert was very upset with me. And what said, did he say? Well, he said basically that this this is just another obfuscation that is going to upset vaccines. And I said, well, you know, you're absolutely right. But I said, we have a new era here. We have a new era of a detection. And the important thing is to get rid of these viruses. Why would he call it an obfuscation if it was a virus that was contaminating vaccines? Well, no, vaccine? because, we, well, there are 40 different viruses in these vaccines anyway that we were inactivating. And, uh, but you weren't inactivating the that, his, though. That's correct. No, that's right. But she, yellow fever vaccine had leukemia yeah. virus in it. And, you know, this is in the days of very crude science. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went down and talked to him, and I said, well, why are you concerned about it? I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, I have a feeling in my bones that this virus is different. I, I don't know why to tell you this, but I've been around biology a long time. I just think this virus may have some long-term effects. Mm -hmm. And he said, what? I said, well, cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. And I love it. Go ahead. Yeah. No. I said, Albert, I said, I, you, you probably think I'm nuts, but I just have that feeling. Well, in the meantime, we had taken this virus and put it into monkey, uh, into hamsters. Uh-huh. So we had this meeting, and that was sort of the topic of the day, and the jokes that were going around was, gee, we would win the Olympics because uh, the Russians would all be loaded down with tumors. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the vaccine was being tested. This was this was yeah, right. Anderson. Right. So, uh, <laughs> and it really destroyed the meeting. Right? You know, it was a big international. Yeah, right. Meeting, so it was sort of the topic. No. Anyway. Uh, was this the Cancer Society meeting in New York? Uh, no, no, Society? this was the... Uh, Sister Kenny. Oh, it's Sister Kenny. Right. And uh, Del Beckel got up and said uh, that he foresaw problems with these kinds of agents. Why didn't this get out in the press? Well, I guess it did. I don't remember. We had no press release on it, obviously. You don't go out. This is a scientific affair within the scientific mm -hmm. community. This, this is, is a scientific, scientific affair within the scientific, scientific mm -hmm. community. An historic victory over a dread disease is dramatically unfolded at the University of Michigan. Here, scientists usher in a new medical age with the monumental reports that prove the salt vaccine against crippling polio to be a sensational success. It's a day of triumph for 40-year-old Dr. Jonas E. Salk, developer of the vaccine. He arrives with Basil O'Connor, head of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, which financed the tests. Hundreds of reporters and scientists from all over the nation gather for the momentous announcement. It was too much of a show, there was too much Hollywood, there was too much exaggeration, and the impression in 1957 that was, uh, no, in 1954, uh, that was given was that the problem had been solved, that polio had been conquered. But anyway, we knew it was in our seed stock for making the vaccine. Mm -hmm. That virus, you see, it's one in 10,000 particles is not inactivated by formaldehyde. It was good science at the time because that was what you did. You didn't worry about these wild viruses. So you discovered it wasn't being inactivated in the salt vaccine. Right. Either. So then, uh, the next thing you know is three, four weeks after that, I found that there were tumors popping out of these hamsters. Despite AIDS and leukemia suddenly becoming pandemic from wild viruses, Hilleman said this was good science at that time.